Hi, uh, my name is Randall. A few days ago, I made a tweet about how I made a font for handwriting, and a lot of people were interested about like, hey, I want to make one of these myself. I have cool handwriting, and you probably do, and you want to make it a font. Well, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. It's pretty simple, but it's a lot of hard work, but it's once you get through it, it's going to be cool. So basically, the first thing we're going to do is a website called calligrapher.com. This is a free website that gives you templates and will convert your handwriting into a font. It is the main basis of what we're doing. It is the meat and potatoes, as you will. Uh, make an account, log in. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to see this page. There's no fonts yet, so we're going to create a template. Uh, there's a whole bunch of spooky stuff here. We're going to click on minimal English or German or French or Spanish. Whatever language you speak, we're going to click on that language and you're going to see all these glyphs. Now, uh, there might be some missing, so we're going to go here and we're going to look through like, you know, there's numbers, punctuation, all that good stuff. We're going to click on basic punctuation because uh, the free accounts have a limit of 85 glyphs, I think, or 75. You can get bright premium account if you want. Clear is a good website. If you want to support them, go for it. Uh, but uh, we're going to go ahead, and since it's a free account, we're going to go ahead and delete all the ones we don't need. There's quite a bit of things I don't need. Like, you know, there's lots of weird math symbols. I'm not good at math. That's why I handwrite for a job. Um, and, we're, you know, we're going to go through miscellaneous, you know, pick the missing ones. You know, there's still some punctuation missing. Maybe you want some numbers. Maybe you want something specific. It's, a, it's your fun. It's your handwriting. It's what you want to do. Remember that. That's important. This is your creation. Anyway, we're going to hit download template up there and switch it to PNG. If you're printing this out and writing it physically with like your favorite marker or pencil or whatever you have, you're going to click PDF so you can print that out yourself. And okay, name your file, whatever you want. This really doesn't matter at all. Make the cells as big as they can and click on the character's background because that will give you a baseline for the size and width of what the letters should be. And we're going to click download. It's going to process and then we're going to click on that zip file. And we're going to extract it to whatever folder we want. It doesn't matter where it goes. As long as you remember where it goes, that's all that really matters in the end. So we're going to do that. We're going to go here, click on this, put it in there. Boom. Easy. So after we do this, you know, we're going to open our favorite drawing application or art program of choice, Clip Studio, Photoshop, whatever you have. It doesn't matter what you have as long as you enjoy using it. We're going to open this up. I'm going to take a second to show Lazy Nozumi. It's a mouse smoothing program that has helped me a lot. It's really good. Thank you, Lazy Nozumi. Basically, all we're going to do at this point is we're going to, you know, pick your favorite brush and go to town. This might take a while. There's a lot of glyphs, depending on how many you put in your template. Uh, it can be very stressful sometimes because you're probably thinking like, oh, I want to make it perfect. Don't worry about making it perfect. Remember that it's your handwriting. This is your font. It's going to look the way you want it to. Don't worry about the baseline. Use it only as a guide. Anyway, once that's all done, we're going to go into Calligrapher again, and we're going to get all these files we have, and we're going to click on my fonts at the top right there, and we're going to click on new font, and that will bring up this menu. Uh, name your font whatever you want. It doesn't really doesn't matter. I named mine that because it's funny, haha. <laughs> Letter spacing, I put this around 40, 50-ish font size, you know, a little bigger, where it's facing a little bit down. Uh, we can't edit metadata yet, but I'll get to that in a second. I'll click on save. Okay, so now we're clicking on upload template up here, and we're going to go to where we saved our templates, and we're going to add them one by one. There's probably a faster way to do this, but I don't know what it is. Someone someone can probably do that. Maybe you can upload a zip. I don't know. I haven't tried. So anyways, we're going to click upload template once we have all images there, and we're going to click this check mark here. It says automatically clean templates. Uh, what that does is that if you, know, if you scanned it and there's like chunky stuff on there, it will clean it. If you're using a more fine, like, detailed brush, you might want to uncheck that because it might, you know, mess up all the details. Anyway, once this is all done, we're going to get this. It's going to show us all our stuff. It's cool. Uh, there's your font. You click Act Character as a font. It'll have this. And then we're going to click uh, Build Font. Basically, what this will do is it will pretty much show us it'll build our font. It's what it says it's going to do. We'll click Build. It'll do its thing. And then, wow, there's our font. There it is. We did it. Uh, you can delete this and write here whatever you want. But you might notice, like, hey, there's some, you know, spacing issues here. This looks weird. This is up too high. This is too low. And that's a common problem with Calligrapher. You can fix it in Calligrapher itself, however. It's kind of difficult. There's lots of steps you got to do. And sometimes it's just not that reliable. 
But yep, there's your font, and we're gonna—I'm gonna show you how to fix it. You can see here, like between the spaces between A and H is bigger than the space between U and H, and T. Capital T is a really bad one. Uh, you can look through the sizes if you want. You can, you know, redo your templates. It's up to you. It really is up to you. Remember that it's your font. You can do whatever you want with it. It should look the way you want it to. But basically, uh, once this is ready, once we're happy, we're gonna download it. And we're going to save it to somewhere we're going to remember. And then we're going to go to a website called fontforge.org. Fontforge is an open source free program to edit fonts. It's a little bit clunky, but it is extremely powerful. Uh, we're going to open it up and then we're going to look for our font that we just saved. Wherever you saved it. We'll put it here and there's our font. You've already seen it, but there it is again. Uh, the very first thing we're going to do in Fontforge is that we're going to look for the metrics window. Once I get there. There it is. Open new metrics window. We're gonna open that up. It's gonna give us a space to look at our, our new letters and stuff. We're gonna type in whatever you want here. Something that you think that you're gonna type a lot if you're using this in whatever fashion you're gonna use. You know, this looks all right. There's some options here. I don't know what they do. They probably do something important, but I use this program at a very basic level. You might notice that, okay, look, this A is way too high. It Compared to E, this A is super high. What's up with that? We want to change that. That's not good. Uh, maybe you want it to be that high. That's great. But I'm going to show you how to edit it so that it fits the rest of the font easier. So we're going to double click this in the main window. And we're, going to get, we're going to get this scary thing. And this is our A. Uh, you might notice that I, if you drag select sometimes, you won't get everything. So always hit Control A to select all of the points. And then we're just going to, you know, uh, pick on one of these little pieces here, these little yellow circles. And then we're going to hold shift and then move it up and down. And you can see live in the metrics window what it looks like when you move it. Uh, the black lines to the left and right of the font change the spacing itself. I always try moving them a little bit closer to where the glyph is itself, just so it spaces a little bit better. Uh, this is pretty much personal preference. I have a very weird preference for this kind of stuff because I have a very weird application for it. But pretty much do whatever you think looks good. And once we're all done with that, uh, we're going to go to font information here. This is where you can add things like copyright information, uh, font name, everything. This is where you do that. You can do that in Clicker for without premium account, but you can do it here for free. There's your tip for the day. Anyway, we're going to click on lookups on the left here. We're going to go GPOS tab. I don't know what any of these stand for. We're going to click on add lookup. We're going to get this scary looking window. Try and click new. It's going to say, oh, you need a lookup type. So we're going to click on type up here and we're going to pick pair position kerning. We're going to do that. There's a whole bunch of other stuff here for like ligature. If you want to get really fancy, there's a lot of stuff you can do here. We're going to click on new again, and we're going to click on kern horizontal kerning. And then we're just going to click OK. There's a name there. The name doesn't matter. Anyway, we're going to click on add subtitle. Name this whatever you want. I don't think it matters. Anyway, we'll get this scary window. And it's pretty much just like, OK, what do you want to start out as? We know we want L and O because we look down there in the metrics. L and O look kind of weird together. So we're going to click on L and O. We're going to uncheck auto occur new entries. Unless you want that on, that's up to you, really. We're just going to manually do it anyway. We'll get this window. We're going to double click on new. And we're going to type in L and O or whatever glyphs you want. And then we're going to click that third box there. And then after that, we can freely just move around the glyph. Uh, this is a very long process. There's a lot of things that will have weird kerning. It's very case by case. Uh, some of the things to look out for is like capital T. Capital T is very awful. Uh, capital A, you know, there's a whole bunch of things to look out for in this sort of case. So basically, after we're done with that, we're going to hit save. And we're going to save as, I like saving it SFT, just so I know that that's the font to edit. And then we're going to go back to file, we're going to click on generate fonts. We're going to click on that, and that's going to bring up this, this window. Uh, this is where the font actually gets made. We're going to change open type to true type, or you can leave as open type. You do, you probably know what you want, but I usually use true type instead of open type. Uh, we're going to click on options here, and we're going to make sure that old style current under open type is checked. Even This will work even for true type, so make sure it's checked. Also click on Windows compatible current on the bottom there, or else all those changes you made won't matter. You'll get this thing that says, hey, this isn't what it should be. Uh, ignore all of that and click yes, because we're not nerds. I mean, we probably are, but just click yes. And there's your font. It's saved. Go to where it's saved to, double click it. You'll get this. Click on install. 
it'll bring up a short download menu box. There it is. And our font is installed into Windows. We're gonna click open paint or any other program you want to test it out. I just use paint because it's fast, whatever. Uh, look for your font and go to town. Test out things. Double check kerning. Make sure it looks the way you want it to. Go up, you know, sometimes like, oh, I don't like how this looks actually. Go back and calligrapher. Do just that glyph, you know, make things look the way you want it to. And that is basically it. I hope this tutorial helped you. Uh, I'll put all the links in the description for everything that you need. And I hope you have a nice day. Thanks for watching and bye bye.